Understanding thanksgiving. Understanding thanksgiving. He said, let us come before him with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise. So God does not only want you to give thanks, he wants your thanksgiving to be loud. There is a way a man thanks God and that thanksgiving has volume. There is a way a man thanks God and that thanksgiving has a voice. We are in an entitlement generation. We are in a generation of, of arrogance and entitlement. If you don't know how to think, you won't know how to thank. Deep thinkers are great thankers. When you think deeply, you thank greatly. When you are, you are, you are, you take a retrospect of your life. You take a retrospect of where you would have been if not God. You have every reason to thank. When you see a man thanking heavily, he has thought deeply. That is why anytime you see David talking about thanksgiving, it will be connection and remembrance of where he was where God found him. Where he was when God picked him. Where he was where God located him. So if you want to thank God well, please think well. No man is alive by any strength of his. No man is alive because of his expertise. No man Man is alive because of his capacity. There are stronger men who are no more Britain. There are richer, wiser men who, are, who have been wiped from the face of the earth. But he kept you. He kept you. Can I say something here? When you see a man on the street mad, a woman on the street mad. You see a mad person stuck naked, picking papers, bits and pieces up from the ground, eating from the dumpster, the dustbin. You see all of that. God is trying to show you it could have been you. When it, it dawns on you that it could have been you. Some of those people, I have seen, have you not seen mad men who are speaking good English? Education failed them. Intelligence fail them. And these are people now who are who have been plagued, sir. Some of them, some of them by no fault of theirs. Some of them is a family foundational connection. Some of them is a hereditary problem. Some of them is an arrow that was fired. And that thing overwhelmed them and now they are on the street. Not because your being alive is not because of your strength. He said, for by strength shall no man prevail. Not of him that runneth, not of him that willeth by his of God that showeth mercy. Am I talking to somebody here? No wonder Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, I am what I am by the grace of God. So no one survives. No one is alive. No one breathes in and out. No one walks on his two feet by any strength of his. It is by the grace of God. And that grace cannot be bought. And that grace cannot be paid for. And that grace cannot be transacted. So when you are thanking God, when you put all of these into cognizance your thanksgiving is voluminous if you can't think you can't thank am i communicating here he said oh give thanks unto god oh give thanks oh give thanks oh so thanksgiving is a command not an advice you are commanded to give thanks. It's not an opinion. Oh, give thanks. So when you are not a tanker, you are violating heaven's instruction. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. First Timothy 4 3. Forbidding to marry. Command and commanding to abstain from meat which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them that believe and know the truth. Give me the message, the New Living Translation and the NIV. They will tell you not to get married. 
they tell to eat this or eat that food. Perfectly good food. God created to be eaten. And to be, to, to be eaten utterly and with thanksgiving by Christians. Such people teach it is wrong to marry and to eat certain food. But God created those foods to be eaten after a prayer of thanksgiving by those <laughs> who are believers and have come to know the truth. How many of you know there are people who are restricted from certain kind of food by reason of tradition or by reason of medication? Yeah. There are people who have special dishes for their health sake. And most of the special dishes don't comprise of what is healthy. What looks rich. But the Bible says, no, for you as a Christian, God has given you all to receive with thanksgiving. Now when a food is set before you, so long you can thank God, you are licensed to eat it. So long you understand the mystery of thanking. You have the permission of eating. So long you understand. Everything is edible. If you want to eat. Now there are people today. Who, who, so God is trying to tell us that. Listen, anything you receive from God. Must be capped up with thanksgiving. Anything you receive from God. Must be capped up up, surrounded, summed up with thanksgiving. Once you receive something from God, so reception demands thanksgiving. Anything you receive of God, anything you receive from God, God is giving you a command and giving you an instruction and giving you a counsel that once you receive, you owe him thanks. Once you receive, you owe him adoration. Once you receive, you owe him appreciation. Is it a job you have received? Thank him. Is it a house he gave you? Thank him. Is it the wife he gave you? Thank him. Is it the husband he gave you? Thank him. Is it the son he gave you? Thank him. Is it the daughter you gave him? Thank him. If you have received anything and you have not thanked him, you are owing him. There are many people all their life, they can never come out to testify. Everything God gives them, they think is their expertise. They can't come out to testify. He said, to be received. With thanks in the name of Jesus. Anyone who is under any form of restriction from good things, you have been restricted from the things that would help you. You have been restricted maritally, restricted financially, restricted in any facet of your life. As you hear the sound of my voice, I make declaration the restriction is lifted now. Psalm 147, verse 7. Psalm 147, and verse 7. Psalm 147. He says, sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise unto the Lord our God. So praise is an element for thanksgiving. Praise is an element for thanksgiving. Anytime you praise God, you are thanking him. Praise is an element. Psalm 100, and, Psalm 100 verse 4. Psalm 100 verse 4. Psalm 100 and verse 4. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving, his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Enter his gate with thanksgiving. So anytime on earth you say, Lord, I thank you, you hit the gate of heaven. Bam. How do we make noise in heaven? How do we hit the gate of when you say, Father, I thank you, you will hit the gate of heaven. So, thanksgiving gives you access to heaven's gates. Thanksgiving gives you access to heaven's gates. Thanksgiving gives you access to heaven's gate. Thanksgiving gives you access. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Philippians 4 verse 6 now. Philippians 4 verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, 
let your request be made known to God. Let your request, request in everything, give thanks. He said, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let you, so thanksgiving is an application for more. Thanksgiving is an application for more. Anytime you say, Father, I thank you, you qualify for the next level. Anytime you say, Father, I thank you, you, you open up qualification for the next level. For everyone who has thanked God for what he has done, an access is open to you for the next level. As you thank God today, there is somebody under the sound of my voice. There's a next level of blessing, a next level of favor, a next level of promotion, a next level of prosperity, a next level of lifting, a next level of intervention, a next level of deliverance, a next level of open doors, a next level of testimony, a next level of favor, a next level of dignity, a next level of honor. You shall walk in that level. You shall walk in that level. You shall walk in that level. You shall walk in that level 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 if your amen is the loudest take the blessing <laughs> Colossians 4 verse 2 Colossians 4 verse 2 continue in prayer and watch in the same with so thanksgiving is a warfare strategy. Whenever we thank God, we are engaging war. So the same capacity prayer has, the same potency watchfulness has, is what thanksgiving carries. The same potential prayer has, the same capacity watchfulness carries, is what thanksgiving possesses. So when a man says, God, I thank you, he has engaged himself in warfare, in a combat. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 4. For every creature of God is good. Somebody say, every creature is good. But on a condition. Nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Give me the NLT and the message. The NLT, the NIV, and the message translation. Everything God created is good and has to be received with thanks. Nothing to be snared and thrown out. NIV or NLT. We know that all creation is beautiful to God and there is nothing to be refused if it is received with gratitude. Ah. Everything God has created is good. Nothing is to be rejected. But everything is to be received with a prayer of thanks. Everything to be received. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it, if it, there's a qualification that qualifies all things to be good. If you can apply thanksgiving, what was bad becomes good. So thanksgiving silences rejection. Thanksgiving silent. When a man, I'm teaching understanding, when something is bad and you thank God for it, it becomes good. Everything called rejection can be silenced via thanksgiving. Anything called abandonment can be silenced via thanksgiving. Anything called hopeless can be silenced via thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, sign anyone who is under the yoke, the spell, the arrow, the satanic intention. Everyone under the spell of rejection. Everyone under the arrow of rejection. Maybe I'll be going through any kind of rejection. Financial rejection, marital rejection, mental rejection, health rejection, status rejection, family rejection, ministerial rejection, the career rejection, professional rejection. In any facet of life, that rejection ends to Today. As we thank God, it ends today. You are moving from rejection to projection, from rejection to selection, from rejection to promotion. No devil of hell can stop you. No devil of hell can stop you. 
you. No devil of hell can stop you. God is taking away rejection. Power is taking away rejection. Glory is taking away rejection. You will no more be rejected. The very places you are rejected, you shall henceforth be accepted. The very places you are rejected, you shall henceforth be celebrated. The very places you are abandoned, you shall henceforth be sent for. In the place of rejection, honor has come. In that of abandonment, projection has come. I see divine intervention in your life and your family. I see divine intervention in your business and your home. I see divine intervention in all that you do. If your amen is loud, I take the blessing. Somebody say, understanding thanksgiving. Jeremiah 30, 19. The first thing thanksgiving does... Thanksgiving provokes multiplication. It provokes multiplication. Jeremiah 13, 19. Out of them, say out of them, shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. When they do that, I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will glorify them and they shall not be small. Out of them, out of them shall proceed the voice of them that make merry with thanksgiving. I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will glorify them and they shall not be small. So your multiplication and your glorification is tied to your appreciation. Your multiplication and your glorification is tied to your appreciation. Your multiplication and your glorification is tied to your appreciation. When you lack appreciation, you are denied multiplication. When you lack appreciation, you escape glorification. Anything you want to increase, thank God for it. That job that you want to increase, thank God for the job. Don't say your job is inconsequential, immaterial. Anything you thank God for multiplies. When Jesus took the bread and thanked him, the bread multiplied. So you are the limitation. You are the one limiting your multiplication because of your lack of appreciation. Appreciation is not just confess. Is applied. So, appreciation is the application for multiplication and glorification. Everyone who wants to enjoy multiplication, who wants to see glorification, should apply appreciation. Anything you, you thank God for, appreciates. Anything you murmur about, depreciates. Uh -uh. just only three cups of rice left in this house while you were cooking it it got burnt because when you complain it depreciates and that was the last one it got burnt principles can I say this to this emotions cannot break principles in the kingdom emotions don't violate principles Principles is superior to emotions. Are you following what I'm talking about? Principles is superior to emotions. Until you settle with what is settled, you can't be settled. Forever, oh Lord, thy word. Until you settle with what is settled, you remain unsettled. Do you want anything to multiply? Thank God for it. Do you want your present level to become better? Thank God for it. He says, I will multiply them. He said, and they shall not be few. I will glorify them, and they shall not be small. So, so, inability to live an appreciative life to God is an application for smallness in life. There are people that can never be big, no matter the hands laid on them. They have, they have a covenant with smallness. They have a covenant with microscopic living. They have a covenant with moritonic existence. They, they, they have a covenant with, with, with lilliputic existence. Because they refuse. Ah, 
Sir, there are people that labor for everything in their life. Even to breathe, they labor. There are things you have gotten freely. You know, as you go higher in life, eh, you begin to understand that to get to the top, it takes a lot of effort. So if God lifts you up without stress, without struggle, you know how to appreciate him. Getting, being a four-pointer or even a five-pointer is not a confession. It's work. It's what? It's work. You are given a project to write. You don't confess. You make research. You don't open plain papers and begin to speak in tongues on them. And at the end, project topic appears. All the methods appears. All the references appears. And the anointing of God through the angel comes and binds the project for you. You move further, you go to your thesis. In your doctorate, you have, you have your thesis, you have your, dis your dissertation. And every dissertation is between 250 to 300 pages, minimum. 250 to 300. Res you will make research and you'll be sweating from your bum bum. And God helps you that you meet a, a, an herald. You meet an herald. After you have burned the midnight candle, burn the midnight oil, he won't go through it at all. He looks at the topic, looks at one, two references. He says, I don't accept it. Go and start again. Oh, oh. As he came, he said, you should bring me in. As I got in, he had a running stomach. He stood up. I said, thank you, Jesus. Now, my heart beat, was beating because that man is a self. He says it clearly that he's a devil. When somebody has accepted to be a devil, you can't tell the devil to punish him. How can, he, how can he punish himself? Now, many of you have gotten acceleration, gotten promotion. So, God has made life so cheap for you. God has so pampered you that there are things you didn't bother to struggle for. They just came. There are things you didn't bother to labor for. They just came. So, you think life is a bed of roses. Ha! It is not. Anything you thank God for appreciates. Anything you thank God for increases. So now we understand the key to increase. Let's apply it. Now we understand the key to multiplication. Let's apply it. Now we understand the key to expansion, glorification. Let's apply it. So anytime you want to see multiplication, you want to see glorification, you must apply appreciation. If anything, so, so if anything around you is too small, it's your fault. If anything around you is still minute, it's your fault. God is not to be held responsible for your smallness. Your lack of appreciation is your limitation. So I can multiply. Everyone around me can tell you, if you stay around me, you hear more than 10 times. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I am multiplying continuously, progressively, Consciously, intentional. So multiplication should be intentional. Am I talking to somebody now? Thanksgiving provokes multiplication. The material reason why we have to thank God is because God hates ingratitude. God hates ingratitude. God hates Luke chapter 17. Bring it up from verse 14. God hates ingratitude. God hates ingratitude. God hates ing And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass as they went. He said, Go and show yourself as they were going. There are some of you, there are things you have been expecting from God. It doesn't come. God said, Keep going. As you are walking with God, there are things God is handling. There are certain level of grace, certain level of power, certain level of favor, certain level of opportunity, certain level of increase that will only come as you progress in your service to God. There are blessings that are tied to your continuous service. It's as they went. Come on, continue. Verse 15. Verse 15. One of them, when he saw, he was healed, turned back. 
they didn't get to the priest. Nobody's followed what I'm saying. Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest and leprosy disappears as they were going. So the power was not resident on the priest. The power was in the obedience to go. When one of them saw, he was cleansed. Now, literal understanding should tell you that he should wait till he gets to the priest. When he saw it happen, he said, before any man would take credit, let me turn to the man that did it. He went back to Jesus. He went back to Jesus. So that it was he, he turned back with a loud voice, glorified God. Verse 16. And fell down at his feet, giving him what? But well, look at this. He was a Samaritan. Not a Jew. Jesus answered and said, We are there not ten cleansed, but we are the nine. Look at verse 18. Verse 18. He said, They are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. The Jews felt entitled that a fellow Jewish man has healed them. A Samaritan saw himself as unqualified. So familiarity is what breeds entitlement. Familiarity breeds entitlement. There are many people who are not grateful to God because they think they praise. They think they dance. They think they worship. They think they fast. They think they pray. They think they deserve what they have. They think that all the protection and projection that God has given them, they deserve it. Until you get to that point that you know that you are what you are by the grace of God. It's the mercy of God that has kept you. It's the grace of God that has preserved you. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, say the Lord. Am I communicating right now? Not of him that will or run it. He's of God that showeth mercy. You are kept by the mercy of God. You are preserved by the mercy of God. You are protected by the mercy of God. You are promoted by the mercy of God. You are projected by the mercy of God. You are honored by the mercy of God. You are lifted by the mercy of God. Not by your power. Not by your might. Am I talking to somebody now? A stranger. Time to dance before the Lord. People come out here to dance and they are rejoicing and you stay at your seat, you feel that they are immature. You feel they have no character. They are misbehaving. Familiarity with God brings familiar spirit. Familiarity with God brings familiar spirit. Familiarity with God produces familiar spirit. There are people who have become so familiar Service is going on and you are looking at the time. Your time is not in God's hand. It's his time that is in your hand. My times, Psalm 35, 31, 15, I think. There are people today. Psalm 31, 15, yeah. There are people today, they have familiarity with God. And the man of God says, stand up. As they are standing up, oh. Sit down. They are so excited. Stand up. Ah, ah, ah. If you are sitting with that kind of person, beg them to change seat or you change seat. Because mode is contagious. Attitude is infectious. What are you doing in church if your heart is not here? That is why I find it funny to see people sleeping during vigil. You left bed, bed. You had opportunity, you left bed. And came to church for an encounter with God. And you bow your head, you are dozing. Living mocker, mocker, mocker foam. Who go from winko foam? You left bed, came to church before principalities, powers, angels, thrones, dominion. And you are sleeping. I, I, am I talking to somebody right now? So it takes. So you see people come out and they are dancing. They are excited. They are glorified. And you think they don't know what they are doing? There's something they just remembered. There is something they just remembered. When the enemy came up to eat their flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host encamp against them, their heart did not fear. Though war rise up against them, in that way they be confident. One thing of their desire of the Lord, and that way they seek after. That they may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of their life. That they 
religion is only tabernacle. When you see men dancing and thinking and screaming, it's because there's something they've seen about God. When you see men excited, it's because they know that there was a battle for their soul. But God did not give them to the wishes and the expectation of our enemy. We know and we know that though a thousand fell at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, he did not come near me only with my eyes did I behold and see the reward of the wicked. When the devil came for my children, the devil failed. When the devil came for my daughter, the devil failed. When the devil came for my son, the devil failed. When the devil came for my spouse, the devil failed. They know that the name of the Lord is a strong power and the righteous run it into it and they are saved. They know that have you not heard, have you not known that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither fainted nor is he weary. There's no searching to his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. The youth may fall and may utterly fail, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not go weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Glory is on your side. Favor is on your side. Praise is on your side. Somebody shall say, yeah, 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 yeah. Take your seat. There are people there are people that think they escaped an accident because they committed the journey into God's hand. There are people that fasted for a journey and still died in the journey. There are people that prayed and prayed and they still died in the journey. But God kept you. He brought you out. Ah. Uh, One day, we are in a vehicle. We got close to um, somewhere coming from Benin. And the vehicle parked. I'll, I'll tell you why the vehicle parked. Parked to check another vehicle that had an accident. When I saw that vehicle, I ran to the middle of the road and began to roll. They didn't know why. Listen to what happened. I boarded the vehicle and I sat down in the park. As I sat down in the park, we have moved. I, was, I like sitting in front then. I always like sitting in front when I go on commercial cars. We sat in front. It's over 20 something years ago. We have moved. I saw a vehicle coming into the park. And a man sitting in front and called me and said, Come down, come down. I have something for you. Come down, come down. So I was looking at him. He was like, Come down, come down, come down. I have something. I said, Driver, stop, stop, stop. He said, Eh? We have waited. We are moving now. You are coming down. He said, I'm not refunding your money. I said, what do you mean? No, if just me, let me collect something. Now. He said, if you come down, people began to shout. Okay, if you come down, you are not coming back. Driver, if you come down, move. So I came down. As I went to the park, the, as I was looking at the, the car, the bus had moved. So I ran into the park and was asking people, please, that vehicle that just entered, now where is he? They said, no vehicle. It is the vehicle you were in that left. I said, no, the vehicle that just entered now. He said, no vehicle entered. I said, what are you talking about? Vehicle entered now. Somebody was telling me he has something for me. They say, are you okay, young man? Are you okay? No vehicle. I say, vehicle? What are you talking about? Vehicle just now. Vehicle entered as we were leaving our bus. He said, please get out, get out. You are waiting for customers. I said, but vehicle, hey. I felt bad. I felt bad that I have missed money. Missed time. I felt bad, I must be honest. So I had to wait for the next vehicle that was loading. Imagine waited for a vehicle that got filled up. He was leaving. From nowhere, you saw a car. And the man said, come down, I have something for you. Only to come down, they say there's no car. You think you are running mad. Many things have happened to me in my life. I'll be touching myself to be sure I'm, I'm okay. And we waited for over an hour. That car got filled up as we were driving. We got close to a hill. We are coming down. The vehicle I entered, the bus I entered, had an accident. The front, that place I sat down, somebody else has taken over. The person's head was off. The car was squeezed and compressed. Sir, only two people made it out, minus the driver. The two people came out from the back. All the rest gone, squeezed. 
as I looked at it and saw where I was sitting, I fell on the road and began to roll. What are you? Because cars parked, bringing out cops. Some were just looking. I began to cry. I began to weep. I said, God, thank you. God, thank you. I was rolling. Sir, it was not my righteousness. It was not my prayer. It was the grace of God. How can I see a car where there was no car? How can I see a car and nobody else saw the car? How can I see a car? Someone says, stop. He knows the only way he can make me stop is when I hear I have something for you. If, <laughs> if that person, that angel in that car, I said, come, let's talk. You're on your own. Oh, how are you? Come, come. You're on your own. Yeah, I have something. Ah, something. How much is transport? Open the door. It was God that had something. It was God that had preservation. It was God that... Listen to me. By angelic encounter, as you thank God from now, you shall be preserved. By angelic encounter, as you thank God from now, you shall be preserved. By supernatural visitation, as you thank God from now, you shall be preserved. Aya, take your seat. So your preservation is in your appreciation. Your thanksgiving is your key to high living. Ayakata pradasha isa parata emparato pilata kata piratasha zaparati kapato lata as as they came to say thank you so nine were healed one was whole so your wholeness is in your thanksgiving one was whole nine were healed what does it mean to be whole to be whole means to be complete in all ramification to be healed means only the department of your body but to be whole means a total completion in all ramification I've told you the story of a man who was seen on Lagos in the Bado Express Wheel rolling on the ground, happy and dancing. And the, the vehicles on the left and the right couldn't move because he would dance here, he would run here, he would go here, he would go. So all of them stopped and were looking at him, running back and forth, pacing back and forth the road. And one of the, the drivers came down, held his hand, said, Your guy, if you want to die, go and die in your house. Don't put us in trouble. And was pulling him out. The man pulled his hand from him and my car. The dare devil robbers. Their devil criminals just took my car. They say, you are dancing. He said, yes, I'm dancing because it was not my life they took. I'm dancing because it was my car they took, not my life they took. I'm dancing because it was not my life. It was just a car. He said, number two, I'm also dancing because I have something now that somebody can take. So do you know there are cars that they can steal? Very dead. I used to have a car, I told you that before. I used to have a car that I leave the key on the ignition. I go to bed. You can't steal it. You can't move it. Because only me and that, if anybody stole that car, I know who stole it. It's the mechanic. Because it's only me and him that knows how to turn that car. Because that car, you have to, at the ignition, you have to turn it four times to the right, four times to the left, hit it three times, then it will start. So there is no way you can prophetically get that code. It's not possible. No prophetic unction can give you that code. So I leave the key. I don't lock it. Nobody. That car was heavily preserved. Nobody could steal it. I told you that <laughs> there are cars people see coming. They run after. There are cars people see coming. They run from. I told you the kind of car people say... No, drive it. That means what they sell to them on the express. And the man is in a jeep, clean jeep. You see them bring newspapers, magazines. When the man is in a Camry, you see they bring gala, pure water. 
When a man is in a dead 404, rat poison, rat poison. <laughs> God hates ingratitude. Your statement should be God filled when there is an intervention in your life. Your whole statement should be God filled. This talk of, I now prayed, I now fasted, I now believed God, it now happened, is sharing glory with God. This talk of, after I prayed and prayed and prayed, after I fasted, I went to the mountain. There are people who have been to several mountains and nothing has come out. It is the grace of God that has better the testimony. When you give thanks to God, let it be all about God. When you give honor to God, let it be all about God. I am what I am by the grace of God. I am grateful for life. I am grateful for the breath of life. I'm grateful for God keeping me alive. My body is working. My face is working. My hands are working. My mouth is working. Father, I thank you. In you, I live. In you, I move. In you, I have my being. Father, I thank you. I'm not ungrateful for being alive from January. I'm not ungrateful for being alive in February. I'm not ungrateful for being alive in March. I'm not ungrateful for being alive in April. I'm not ungrateful for being alive in May. I'm not ungrateful for being alive in June. I'm not ungrateful for being alive in July. I'm not ungrateful for being alive in August. I'm not ungrateful for being alive in September. I'm not ungrateful for being alive in October. I'm not ungrateful for being alive in November. I am not ungrateful for being alive in December. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I went to bed. I woke up. I saw my children's face alive. I thank you. I looked to my right, to my left. I saw my spouse. I thank you. I saw my siblings. I saw my family. I thank you. I thank you. Anyway, I've displayed the act of ingratitude. Forgive me. Have mercy. I thank you. I thank you. Anyway, I've displayed the act of ingratitude. Mercy. 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 Anyway, I've displayed the act of ingratitude, of ungratefulness. Mercy. 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 I thank you. I thank you. I repent of the sin of ingratitude. I repent of the sin of ingratitude. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat. Let, hear this and please always remember. Every act of God deserves thanksgiving to be perfected. Anything you thank God for, you establish. Anything you thank God for, you perfect. Every intervention of God needs thanksgiving to be perfected. When they demand thanks God, God perfected his healing. Nothing is established until thanksgiving is applied. Nothing is perfected until gratitude is initiated. Hmm. You think you have seen it all until you learn to thank God always. You think you have seen it all until you learn to thank God always. When you thank God always, you discover there are things you have not seen. When you thank God for yesterday, you are making today. Thanking him for today creates tomorrow. You thank God for yesterday, you are making today. Thanking him for today creates tomorrow. Am I communicating here? I say, am I communicating here? Mm. Number three, and then we pray. Thanksgiving must be done with sacrifice. Psalm chapter 50 verse 4. 14. Psalm 50 verse 14. Psalm 107 verse 22. Psalm 50 verse 14. Psalm 107 verse 22. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. 
Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare is what? With rejoicing. Thanksgiving, this attitude, this latitude of coming to thank God without something sacrificial is a waste of thanksgiving. It says sacrifice. Thanksgiving is to be done with sacrifice. God kept you for 11 months. And now to thank him, is that thing in your hand? God kept you for 11, in those 11 months, you bought cars. You made your hair. You bought clothes. You bought expensive things. And how do you thank God? A right-legged broken chicken. A native dried black fowl with red eyes that look like a witch. An infected plantain. A corrupted yam. Polluted bag of onions. Say God. Uh, say God does not need it. Apostles, does God need it? God does not need it. So, so let's just... Does God need to keep you alive to be God? Does he need to keep you alive? God, God has no point to prove he's God already. But God kept you alive. See how you are thanking him. Look at the recklessness. God said, this one, ah. Uh, I already had in mind of what to thank God. I turned to mama on the altar. I was saying, how do we, how do we thank God? I already had the preparation. But I, no, I felt that was too small to thank God with. For keeping you alive. There are people you... Don't tell me you had nothing. There are people you think have nothing until they are sick. You'll be shocked where they will bring money from. Some of you never thought you could raise millions until there was a medical report. Where the money came from, you, you can't remember. There was a lady and the, and the son, they will meet me every service. It was a crisis. I'll give them money. I'll give them money. I'll give. It was a normal thing. Ah, Papa, today there's nothing, you know. Ah, nothing, you know. So I had to keep their money every Sunday. Because I know they will come. I didn't see them for one week, two weeks, three weeks. Wow. I said, the Lord is good. So this one can go for somebody else. After about two months, I saw them. What happened? They say one of their brothers were sick. So all of them were running around to raise money. They spent 2.6. I said, you could spend what? I said, you, did you spend? He said, yes, yeah, so what she raised was over 800,000. I said, you. He said, yeah, how? I sold wrapper, I sold jewelry, I sold... So you have wrapper to sell. You have jewelry to sell. I said, if I see your leg near my office again. There are people that prefer to spend money for problem. There are people that, in crisis, that is when you know that they can gather wealth. And God kept you alive and you feel entitled. Thanksgiving. So it is called thanks and giving. When you thank, you give. So thanksgiving is incomplete without giving. It's good to dance. And your giving must be sacrificial. Sir, I have seen people become wealthy. I've seen the blessings of God by giving. If I stand here to give you testimonies, we'll be here till evening of the blessings I've seen. Uh, I've shown Mama, the, the man, I used to drive a car, a Mercedes 190 padded. There was a man that bought it for me some time back. Something happened. Hear the story. You want to hear the story? I was ministering. I preached and preached and preached on sacrifice in a certain church. And people were giving, 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 giving. And the man, the wife was about to travel. And the wife told the husband, she's traveling. So the husband took the money that the wife would use to travel. To go and talk to her brothers who are wealthy, that the brothers should support the husband. She was going to spend some time begging them. So, took the money. We are, myself and the pastor, it was in the morning, we were driving out of the church. And the man saw us. He said, please, I've been in the program. This and this is my condition. My wife is traveling. This is the money. I want you to pray on it. As she gets to her brother's place, 
let them favor her. I said, okay, kneel down. I came out of the car. I prayed and laid hands, and I heard the voice of God. And I said, God said, I should tell you, go and drop the money on the altar. He said, I should touch the altar with the money. I said, this is a touch. Drop. Leave it. He said, did you hear what I said? It is the only money we have. We gather for my wife to travel. I said, I know. Drop it. And I entered the car. I left. He said he dropped it. He went back home. The wife said, hey, thank God. Did, did they see anything? They didn't see anything. What did they say will happen if I get there? You are not traveling, no. The man said, I should drop the money. At the eh? And you dropped it. So yes. You are not ashamed. Ooh, man like you, man like you, man like you. If it's me now, you will have mouth. Man like you say drop money. Ooh, ooh. And the woman said, I won't forget. Anytime I see that pastor, anytime he's preaching, he's doing not that prophecy. I am suspecting him. I am suspecting him. To cut the long story short, somebody came from abroad, from Germany, and the person was executing some projects. And he got the news that the wife has given birth. So he had to rush back and told this man, he has executed three of the projects. There are two left. The man should help him finish it and take the profit. In less than one month, the man was so blessed, he built a glass house. Glass. He bought cars. When I was, he told me the story. So when I was dedicating the wife's car, she sat down gorgeously. I said, Madam, anytime I see women driving this car, I am suspecting them. I am. She said, Ah, Papa, you know they forget something. I said, Why will I forget? Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. God knows how to turn captivities when sacrifice is initiated. God does not need your money. He wants to see your faith. He wants to see your love. Sacrifice is an expression of love. It's an expression of love. One day I was worshiping the Lord. How great thou art. How great thou art. Oh Lord my God. When I'm in awesome wonder. Consider. I lifted up my hands. Then says my soul. My savior God to thee. And God said. Am I really great? I said ah. How great thou art. Are you sure? How great thou art. And God said, go outside. I was still worshiping. There sings my soul. My Savior. God said, look at your cars. My Savior. He said, how many are they? I said, four. He said, I want them. My hand was like, was like this. As he said, I want them. He came down. Uh, 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 uh. I said, Lord, but one belongs to my wife. What do I do? He said, give out the other cards. All of them. And I began to cry. I gave her the cards. Then my wife was there. She was, she, it was a white blue, Nissan Bluebird that she was driving. It was part of what we gave out. Now, how do I now face my wife to tell her that God said we should give out all the cards? So in the evening of it, I went to go and pray for somebody. I had no car anymore. So I called a member to come and carry me to go pray for somebody. So we are driving in the um, waterboard area. And I saw another member. So I came out. I was greeted. I said, Papa, where's your car? I said, ah, I don't have car again. I've given out my car. Oh, okay. I'm coming, sir. I said, what? I said, I'm coming, sir. He went, brought his brand new car. He said, my pastor cannot be entering member's car. And I have more than two cars. This is my car. So he gave me. I said, thank you. I entered. I went home. When I got home, somebody called me and said, Papa, this is not fair. You didn't tell me you don't have a car. It is so-and-so brother who told me he gave you a car. I'm coming. He brought his own car. Now, to cut the long story short, we had so much cars in the compound. They were parking cars outside by the field. Somebody, will, I came to church that Sunday. I said, please, I do not need a car again. People will buy a car put their papers in the car, put the key, and run. We didn't know who was bringing what. So I came outside, I saw, okay, who brought this? Nothing, we just see papers, see everything. I came to church. If, I, if any of you, Thanksgiving, we are in the council hall. God told me to give my padded bends. I was emotional about that car. I just, you know, there are some things you just like. I became so emotional about that car. The Lord said, I want the car. And I give the car. <laughs> I asked my wife on the altar. We just got married. I said, God said he wants my car. He said, sure. If it's God, why not? Give him. 
I came out, I dropped the papers. Funny enough, I preached. I was one that preached and dropped the car. We got to Benin on a Tuesday. Somebody came, gave me a brand new V boot. Said, God says, You give me. I said, Praise God. We are driving. We, we left the car there. We had to rush to the morning session. We are coming back from the morning session. A BMW 5 Series convertible was driving after us. We said, Where is this guy going? So we are taking different routes. It was following us. We are trying to avoid. They said, That means this car is following us. No problem. So I told the people in the car, I said, As soon as I park in, open the door, jump down and face him. So as soon as we drove in, everybody just opened the door at the same time. Came down. What do you want? What do you want? So I had my Bible as I was walking in. He said, Papa, Papa. They said, You cannot see him. You cannot see him. You can't see him. He said, Papa, Papa, please, I have to see you. They said, You can't see him. He said, God said, I should give this my car. They said, Is that it? You can see him. You can see him. You can see him. <laughs> you can see him. So I came back to Auchi with two heavy cars. And the Lord said, call a man of God from Ekboma to dedicate the car. Some people were in church. People like Evangelist Beatrice, Daniel. Some of them were in church. Abudim was in church. Winner was in church. Many of them were in church that day. Yeah, Elias was in church. And as soon as the man was thanking God for the car, the Lord said, as he's going, let him take the two of them. I just came out. I said, sir, and the Lord said, I should tell you, go with the cars. Two women stood up and left the church. Two known, committed, wonderful sisters. They left the church and they told people by then that this is the last day they will attend Omega. Our pastor don't mad. This is not giving. In no way. In no way. In no way. Our pastor is not well. This one is not sacrifice. He is mad. So I told them, I said, ah, why did they stop church? What did I do? Go and talk to them. So they started telling other people, you are still going to that church? One day, he will just come to the altar and sow all of you. He will sow all of you as seed. Say, I thereby take this church and I dash the next church. They left. Because they couldn't understand. They came to rejoice over what God has done. Now they are rejoicing. The man has given everything. He takes that kind of, that kind of stupidity in quotes to enjoy on common abundance. You want to see abundance? You must have that kind of madness, sir. Until what is in your hand goes. What You see, listen to this. Don't give to God because you are expecting return. Give to God because you love him. God is not MMM. God is not a Ponzi site. God is not cryptocurrency. We give to him on the platform of our love. So if you are sacrificing, let it be love based. There are certain pastors, let them fast from now till next year. They can never be blessed. Because they have a mentality of collecting. They are never givers. You are permanently stranded when you make yourself a Melchizedek. Check every high flyer. Every high flyer in the kingdom is an aggressive man of sacrifice. Second Samuel 24, 24. Second Samuel 24, 24. I will not give to God that which cost me nothing. How can the whole department, a department where somebody escaped death that year, somebody was preserved that year, somebody got married that year, somebody gave birth that year, all kinds of testimony, all of you line up, you are holding this one tiny envelope to, to show God our own, in fact, there are some thanksgiving we give. We are telling God how ungrateful we are. You didn't hear what I said? There are some thanksgiving that communicates your, your ingratitude, not your gratitude. As long as the earth remains. Sea time. Harvest. Cold. Heat. Summer. Look at what happened in Turkey. Look at what happened in Turkey. 12,000 people. Sir, do you know what 12,000 is? Not 1,200. Not 120. Not 12. 12,000 people buried. An earthquake. Major stars. Celebrities. Professionals. And if you are looking for places that are earthquake prone, 
geographically speaking, there are places in this country. There are earthquakes. Have you seen people build houses close to canal? Close to canal. Ten years, the house is still standing. Not because of the, the, the uh, expertise of the engineer, but God keeping them. And we are all still alive and well. What can you pay for that? Show him. There are some of you that have done what you call thanksgiving. I need to, you need to repeat it now. Because what you did was not thanksgiving. What you did was a display of your ingratitude to God. Ingratitude. God kept you alive. That thing you gave God, if they give you for, to keep something for 11 months, will you take it? That thing they gave you, if they, you gave God, if they give you to stay awake, no sleep, for 11 months, your eyes will be open, watching over something. And that thing you came to thank God with is what they came to thank you with. Your ingratitude angers angels. Your ingratitude angers angels. Today we are going to thank God and show him how grateful we are. How appreciative we are. How thankful we are. Your level of sacrifice shows your depth of gratitude. Your level of sacrifice shows your debt. You kept me. You kept me.